this topic is three months old from The Guardian. But I thought it was really interesting to read and just the headline itself because I felt like for the longest time, I was very resistant and I was pushing back on a lot of this stuff. The title on The Guardian article says, two thirds of CEOs think staff will return to the office five days per week, a survey finds. And at the time, especially during the peak of the pandemic, because I never had the ability or the chance or the or the note or the status at work or whatever that fucking term is to work from home when the pandemic happened and lockdown happened the best thing that happened was the acceptable how it became more widely accepted in most companies everybody from entry level to you know executives were able to work from home for the majority of the time of the pandemic some people had to still go to work but the majority of people could work from home and from a laptop and i think that opened up the possibility of most of us having a better work-life balance, especially myself, um, having worked in, you know, comp startups, especially companies that I actually enjoyed working at, what you end up, what ends up happening if you work in a, a job that you actually like, you end up staying longer, you end up working harder, and you end, end up just taking up one more of your time. And even though you're earning more money, you actually don't have a lot more free time to do the things that you enjoy which is obviously annoying because when you weren't making a lot of money, you had way more free time, but you never had the money to really enjoy your free time. So the working from home thing freed up your time. It allowed you to maybe go to a doctor's appointment in the morning without having to call in sit for work or go during your lunch break. It allowed you to go to the bank. It allowed you maybe to even to take your kids to school if they start before 9 a.m. All these amazing things you could do that you couldn't do if you had to go to a physical office. But... I have to say, over time, I'm understanding now why people prefer working in the offices. I don't think the issue was the offices. It's more so the culture around it in terms of staying late and whatever it may be that really took up people's time. And maybe the kind of like, the, yeah, the, the, the kind of domination of your day. Because sometimes it felt like when you went to work, it wasn't just a nine to five. It was the whole day especially depending on your seniority, if you're maybe a little bit higher up in terms of managerial shit, you might have to be checking your emails on the way to work. That time all counts. You might have to take, you might only have to take 30 minutes for your lunch. You might have to stay another 30 minutes after work. All of a sudden, those are two more hours added to your day. By the time you get back home, it's 8 p.m. So it kind of annexes your time. It dominates everything. So I feel like sometimes, especially, and the, and the commute as well, as Tim Esco says. So I think nowadays, what I think is happening, I feel like, and again, maybe I'm speaking for myself, but I feel like most people have a bit more clear separation between work and leisure or work and free time. So when they're on their way to work, like maybe it's just me, but I don't see as many people on the commute, whether they're going home, whether they're going to work or home, who are on their laptop. It's not like a thing anymore. I'm seeing a lot more people just enjoying their commute, listening to music, watching a TV series, reading a book, or just staring aimlessly into the sky or at someone's bum but you don't necessarily see people working and i think in london especially you'd see people like fucking tight like not even like performative or oh, look at me i've got a laptop no they were fucking working for real and i feel like more people now are not doing that so i feel like nowadays there's a bit more separation between work and home so even if we do have to turn back into the office which most articles are saying we have to and i do agree i'm seeing a lot more again i'm sure some of you guys who are listening or the ones who are in the stream chat will agree with me if you work in an office you will know that um a lot of companies now are requiring you to go at least two days a week or sometimes three days a week into the office and even though it's a bit of a bummer after many many months of staying at home alone sometimes it's quite nice to be able to go into the office and see your colleagues the only problem is sometimes when you go in it can be quite distracting because you haven't seen each other for so long you want to fucking dump everything that you've kind of found out or that you've learned or share something a life update so it doesn't it's not the most productive way to spend your day in the office but just being in there with other people is quite beneficial like sometimes you can get more done in a couple of hours at work at your desk than you can ever done at home sometimes because you're so distracted and because you're at just home and i always think and again maybe i'm again i'm i'm a bit in a minority i'm a bit I'm talking out of my own ass here because I sometimes don't do this, but I think it's important to have a to have your home be a, like a sanctuary. It doesn't matter if you're living in a shoebox, in a cupboard, you know, you're unhoused. You have to have your home to, you have to, your house has to be separate from what you work at. So bringing your work home all the time, having it stare at you is probably not the best way to go about life. Like, you know, even if it means like 
having a corner where you can kind of maybe like physically close your laptop and maybe turn your your seat to the other way. I think it's important to put a lot of separation between, okay, I'm, I'm working, I'm not working. I'm asleep. I'm not taking my laptop in bed with me. Do you know what I mean? That's where I fucking sleep and fuck. Nothing else. I'm on a chair. I'm in a city. I'm watching a movie or whatever. Do you know what I mean? But mixing those things can be a little bit weird. But I do like how now everyone is kind of reprioritizing or, you know, figuring out what's most important and kind of dialing into that. So even though we're going to be returning back to work, it's going to be a what? It's going to be a way more, how do you say? Way more constructive, maybe? That's the word I'm trying to look for. But whatever. Um... So this is an article, again, a recent one taken from Forbes. The future of work is a return to office inevitable. Um, and it says the following. Um, it says, has the hybrid work bubble burst? According to the U.S. Census Bureau, the number of Americans working from home has fallen dramatically since its pandemic highs. Today, fewer than 26% of U.S. households still have someone working remotely at least one a day, which is a significant drop from the early 2021 peak of 37%. It's highly surprising that few people are working from home now, that activities from schooling and socializing have resumed in person. However, the data does suggest that the bright hybrid future, many predicting, might not materialize after all. While some employees still offer hybrid work, um, working and will continue to, there's a clear drive to get people back into the office or to enforce stricter hybrid arrangements. In the past, an employer might have to ask staff to come to the office two or three days, but now many are increasing specifics, indoors, office and days of introduction for more structure and regain control. But you know who I think ruined this? You know who I think ruined this? Girl bosses and, girl, um, and, and boy bosses, right? Those guys and girls online who do those, oh, come to work with me things, I think they're the ones that ruined working from home for all of us. Those fucking idiots that work these nonsense jobs that don't matter, right? Product managers that can't code, who barely know how to fucking, you know, send an email, are, are here making 100,000 a year, and they're bragging about how little work they do on social media. They're posting entire vlogs where they spend the majority of their time in the office cafeteria, in the office gym, having a swim, going to the fucking coffee shop around the corner, buying flowers at lunch, all this nonsense instead of doing work, I think they ruined working from home for the rest of us. Because most of us, most of us, most of us, when we work from home, we, 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 we don't take it for granted. We take it as a, as a, as a privilege. We take it as, some, as somewhat as an honor, as somewhat of a, you know, as a gift, Right, especially if you if you're used to, especially someone like me that's I spent the majority of my career working in retail and service industry, right? So earning shit salaries, working in terrible places where it's soul destroying. Kind of the office and working nine to five was almost like a it was almost like my um my salvation. Oh, finally I I get to work like Monday to Friday, like instead of just working all weekend and all public holidays and shit. Finally, I get like a set structure and shit, right? Even though when you go work in an office, you so, you soon realize that you give up a lot, like socially. Like, you know, you don't really make as many friends in the office. Um, you know, there's not a lot of, like, teamwork going on there. It's a lot more snaky environment in an office compared to like, working in a bar or a restaurant and shit. But obviously, you have a bit more, you know, f structure. You have a bit more, um, you know, whatever. You, you can kind of plan your, your day, your year a bit more working in an office, right? But there are some people out there that really want to get away with the most without doing anything. And I think they're the ones that ruined it for us. The ones who want to get away with the most in life without doing anything are the ones that ruined working from home for us. The ones who are bragging online, bragging online about how little work they do, fucked up for all of us. And I despise those humans. But it's also incredible to see so many of them getting let, let go recently from a lot of tech startups like Twitch and what, what, and what else, right? Are let going a lot of these people who are earning like hundreds of thousands of dollars doing absolutely nothing, right? Retweeting things, sharing things on fucking social media, writing quippy t tweets and shit and headlines on emails are now being let go because nobody needs a fucking specific marketing communications manager. You can just roll that into one job and pay that person half of what you're paying the other person. Do you know what I mean? So that's the thing that's happening and I'm happy to see a return to work i really really am so um what are we saying here what are we saying here what are you guys saying here i know a guy who works custom service and uh, for a gym in bricky he lives in gambia wow seven day really that's fucking sick i love that that's the vibe man that's the actual vibe remote like um being remote uh independent right um uh what's the what's the term called um oh i forgot what the term is called but I remember, you know what I like though? I think credit to these people. I remember when I went to I went to travel 
to visit a friend of mine who was working there at the time in Nicaragua. And I did a bit of stuff, you know, I kind of traversed a little bit through Honduras and a few other people, right? but mostly in Nicaragua. And I remember meeting this guy in a hostel um, in Nicaragua. I forgot the name of it. I think the hostel had a had like a foot iconography. If you've ever been to the Nicaragua in the city of Leon or Leon, you would know there's a hostel there that's got like a foot that's got like an orange, sort of orange foot, like kind of logo, right? Really cool little hostel. And I remember meeting a dude there from Brazil back in the day, maybe 20, 2008 or something, right? And he was uh, he was doing the whole remote working thing. But I didn't know that existed. I didn't know that was a thing. So I remember trying to figure it out, trying to ask him, what's going on? How do you do this, man? How do you just like, because you know, we got talking over drinks. And he was like, yeah, I'll just travel in it and work. This is how I'm, I'm, I'm currently working now. But I'm traveling through Central America, going to go to South America, back to Brazil to go visit my family and then back up here again because my girlfriend lives here and shit. I was like, bro, but how? But how? All right, I couldn't figure out how. And he wouldn't tell me. He gatekeep, he, gate, he was the gatekeeper of remote working of being lo location independent, right? Of being a digital nomad. That's what it's called. He was gatekeeping digital nomad culture. And I honestly do think he did a good thing because now everybody knows about being a digital nomad. It's been absolutely rinsed. He did well to gatekeep it. I understand why he was gatekeeping it because now everybody is doing, everybody is a personal assistant to somebody in a far flung location. Everyone's doing, as Seven Dirty said, some sort of office work, you know, reception thing, customer service from a location that you don't need to be next to the office. You know I mean, that's the, it, that's the thing. Like people just, people kill it too much. You know, that's the issue. They rinse it too much. So I understand why that guy was very um, resistant um, to tell me why he was able to afford that kind of lifestyle because now everybody does it they've co-opted it they've rinsed it and i kind of get why he was being so guarded about it i really do understand i really do honestly i really understand but at the time imagine back then you're you're seeing somebody like traveling and he's super young and so you're like how are you doing this bro how are you doing this and then later on he tells you or later on you find out and you're like you know what now i get it because everybody's fucking rinsed this shit so i fully understand i fully fully understand